We're all in a simulation. None of this is real. Hail Satan. I mean, you know. Can, can we say hail Jesus, though? I mean, we can say whatever we want. It's our podcast. I mean, Jesus is king. Hashtag Kanye West. <laughs> you see those, uh, you see the new Yeezy, what are they called? The slides? Yeah, Yeezy slides. They're made out of fucking pond algae. D- what? Are they really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're made out of algae. Oh my so god. You know, biodegradable. I just threw a ball 30 miles per an hour. That's wild. They they look so bad though, right? Like, w- w- they do. <sighs> I mean, I have a couple of, I, like, I have some of the easy shoes, but like, it's just the ones I like. You know, they're solid colors. PBA is still pissing me off. I don't know. I, I saw a picture of them slides, and like my first thought was like a really old person in a nursing home wearing. Those. I mean, do you 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 know what the uh, you know what the three fifties look like, right? I do not. Google those. Those are the ones I have. The Yeezy three fifties. Yeah, Yeezy okay. three fifty. Look that up. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna be in editing. This is gonna be up on the screen, so y'all at home can see this, but. Uh, Hang on, Yeezy 350s. Oh, okay. What what color are yours? I have uh, I have white, black, and tan. Ah, three different sets. Mhm. Nice. Yeah, those aren't as bad. Like like the slides are god awful, but these these aren't that bad. The yeah. black looks decent. They're three. They're By not. Way, are we are we recording? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I started about the time you said that this was all uh, this is all a simulation. So please refrain oh. from saying any racial slurs. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that me, not that Eagle would. No, no, not that he would. Yeah, that's right. He's a Yankee. You gotta watch out for me though. <laughs> also, uh, just booted up Spider Man. I'm sixty three percent of the way through the story. I got too frustrated with PPA and uh, would have started cursing. So yeah, yeah. Spider Man was a good game. That like I, I like the collectathon aspects in it because it. Uh, I mean, I grew up playing like Mario 64 and Banjo Kazooie, so collectathons are my thing. And being able to like collect the backpacks and all the different things they mm-hmm. have hidden around the city is like I like that a lot. That was a fun yeah, that's game. That's why I liked. Uh, that's why I liked Uncharted because of the little collectibles. Yes, game. that was another good game for collectibles, except they were really hard to find in some of them levels. God, I forgot I, I still have them. to beat this. I, I got Uncharted stuck into. Too. I got all the trophies because I got all the treasures because I played the story like nine times. Oh, nice. That's one of my proudest moments. I forgot that I got stuck with a Sable Outpost fight. Oh, and yeah. That's why I rage quit the last time. Is it the one in the uh, the park? Yep. Yeah, that one gave no, me... It's by, it's by the water. Oh, that one too. Yeah, there's two really bad ones. The one by the water and the one in the park are both god-awful. They're, like, they are just... I... Yeah, I did not have fun with those, but... Well, and I wasn't, because I got all the collectibles for uh, the Black Cat. Uh-huh. It's just, uh, I went to try to do the Black Cat, but I couldn't because it it brought me into the outpost. And I Ooh. can't get out of it. Yeah, you gotta keep doing it until you beat it. Use the, I would say use a lot of stealth if you can, because one hit kills, I mean, you know, every time, but... Anyway, I like my finisher too. Kind of changing gears here, no pun intended. Does it surprise anybody that Chase Elliott won most popular driver this year? Absolutely not. Yeah, no, it didn't really surprise me either. What did surprise me was Kyle Busch getting second. Cause like, listen, what? I I like Kyle Busch, mm-hmm. big fan of him. I know he's got a lot of fans. I didn't think he'd be number two. I was thinking like fifth. And Blaney, Blaney wound up being fifth. I think, I think the the final order was Blaney in fifth, Di Benedetto in fourth, something like that. God, who was third? I can't even remember. I think the Benedetto was third. Was he third? Then who and was then fourth? Was, Tru- Truex Maddie was fourth. D. Yeah, Truex was fourth. So it was it was Blaney, Truex, Matty D, Bush, and then. Then uh, Chase Elliott. Hello, Matty D. If anything, I think the Martin Truex finishing fourth is one of the more surprising ones. You know, you're kind of right. Haven't, I haven't talked to many NASCAR fans that like him. Like I, I used to be a Truex fan. I used to, 
like be big on Truex when he was with MWR, and then mm-hmm. once once he started winning a bunch and it went to his head and his whole attitude kind of changed, I was like, eh. And I, I'm not a huge fan of him at this point, but I used to be, and but yeah, that is kind of surprising. There's not not that much going on there, but I also got to wonder if like the events of the season maybe didn't have something to do with Truex being like most popular like he because i mean let's be let's face it he had homestead in the bag and then yeah. threw it away and so maybe people like felt bad for him and they voted for him like he gained their sympathy well, no, i think oh. that in, i think that in certain places and in certain demographics like people really like truex i think a lot of the um a lot of the Earnhardt Jr. fans just went over there to him because they know like that relationship that Earnhardt and Truex have together. <laughs> that's true. It's, that's kind of natural. That's true, but I also feel like a lot of the people that were voting for Jr. as most popular driver are probably now voting for Chase. Yeah, just I cause... mean, I feel like Earnhardt's fans kind of split between those two. Yeah, that could well be could well be plus i mean truex he went on a tear right at the end of the season too and i mean if you're gonna get up there on most popular driver you're gonna want to get attention at the end of the season and that's when he came to life because truex at the start of the season he was not doing that hot i mean he was you know top 10 doing decent enough but he was nowhere near where he was last season and then it was like halfway through the season he just came to life yeah it was like he did really good in that like middle part of the year Mm -hmm. won a couple races locked himself in and then he kind of got quiet yep and then he started winning again Mm -hmm. which is kind of like kind of like Johnson would do he would go through stretches where you just don't hear about him and then those last 10 races he was in the top 5 every week yeah yeah you're not wrong I mean keyword used to do (laughs) yeah yeah poor guy yeah yeah, he's not doing too hard. Oh, that's some big news we can talk about. So Johnson saying 2020 is the last year. I mean, it doesn't really surprise me because I feel like he's over the hill. Like his, his, his natural talent is starting to go away. And the package that we had this year did not suit him in the slightest. And Look. I don't think he has much faith in the package that we got coming up to suit him either. Mm-mm. Like I told you guys... T- Early, I told y'all at Daytona when he when he won the the clash or whatever that was. Yeah, when he wrecked the whole field in the clash, I told y'all he's done after next year. And y'all were like, "No, J- Jimmy's gonna win again." I was like, "No, if he doesn't win this year, he's out." And he's doing it. So I think that um, I'm not sure if it's gonna be one of those Xfinity guys or somebody that's already in the Cup Series that takes over for him. Yeah. I, I don't know if Johnson might have something to say about that. He probably will. I heard that Larson actually got approached, but something about he, he doesn't think Hendrick would let him run dirt, so he's not. he doesn't yeah, want to no. do that. Because of uh, earlier uh, with Casey Kane, he was in a bad accident in the sprint car, and uh, after that happened, uh, Hendrick stopped uh, letting him run. Did he? I thought he let Casey run dirt up till the end. No, there was there was a couple years there in the middle where he wasn't, and then uh, towards the end, Hendrick kind of let him go back to dirt. Yeah. So. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I, Larson isn't going to go anywhere where the team well, owner is mean, not going to let him run dirt. Was, I mean, I feel like if you got somebody that's established and obviously has the talent that he does, you could make an exception. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I think Hendrick's kind of foolish to let that stipulation pass him by. Because, I mean, what what else do they have? To, I mean, what, Noah Gregson? Well, that and, like, t- a lot of racing is mentality. It's not just skill. You have to have a clear state of mind. And yeah. so you want a happy driver. And if you're telling your driver that he can't do the other thing that he really likes to do in life, he's not going to be fully there like you know on his a game it's just not gonna work so i I don't understand why he'd have like i i do understand why he'd have a rule like that he doesn't want to have a driver get injured and he's out part way through the season but i mean like i mean that's the reason why gibbs is able to get the kind of talent that they have because i mean 
you look at Tony Stewart, he's not running NASCAR anymore, but he's running, he's racing more now than he did when he was in yeah. the Cup Series. I mean, yeah. and he was doing that the whole time. I mean, he was doing, he did the double, I know, once, maybe twice. I mean, he, he was racing other stuff, and Kyle's yeah. still racing other stuff. Yeah, Kyle does all kinds of other stuff racing. Denny used to have his little short track showdown, and pretty much the whole Gibbs team would come to that. So, I mean, yeah, I feel like the Gibbs, the Gibbs drivers always seem to be performing well. I mean, it's probably because they have the best equipment at the moment. But they also seem to be, you know, kind of, they don't have a short leash. Yeah. He just kind of lets them do their thing as long as you show up, you know, for the weekend. Yeah. I don't care what you do. And I think that's the way to go because, like I said, the, the the happier your driver is, the better of a mentality they're going to have and the better they're going to perform. That's all there is to it. So, I don't know. I think Hendrick is making several mistakes with the way he's running his team, but, I mean... You know, that's just one of them. Other than Larson, I don't know who would take over the 48. I mean, there was rumors of maybe having, uh, uh, shoot, what's his name? God dang it. I'm drawing a blank. Oh, there was rumors of Chastain um, coming up. I think those have been squashed. Like, those rumors were, like, denied oh. immediately. But that, that was one of, like, the first things that people were saying was, like, you know, get Chastain up there. That would be pretty cool. I don't know how Chastain would do in the 48. I mean, he's like been. I, I feel like they should really have somebody that's already a winner. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because they already have, you know, they got William Byron and Chase Elliott who were, like, groomed to be there. And they're babies. Yeah. And Bowman's not old either. I mean, yeah. he got more starts than them, but that's because he was, you know, with those low tier teams. Yeah. And Bowman started winning recently. I mean, he's been doing better. Yeah. I mean, the team has a, a – they got a long way to go, but I don't I don't see that team being extremely successful if Chase Elliott is their veteran. Yeah, you know their, I mean? their flagship driver. Yeah, that's not – you don't really want that. That's not, that's not to say that I don't see Chase as being a flagship driver. He's definitely talented. Oh, yeah, he's a good driver. I mean, I feel like at this point in his career, he needs somebody – older you know what i mean i tell you what he had he had jimmy but jimmy hasn't been performing he mm -hmm. needs somebody that's older than him more experienced than him to to win races and be there to show him more i, I tell you what you want experience in that 48 you want you want a uh, mentor you want kurt bush nope you want morgan shepherd jesus christ <laughs> well, I, I, let's make it happen you guys keep uh, forgetting to mention who has Hendrick ties. That is, is that? a free agent come next year. It's Brad Keselowski. So that's, that's true. something that wouldn't be a surprise. Well, his contract comes up, but that's not to say he'll be a free agent. I think he's probably uh, going to renew. I think he probably will. But, I mean, if he doesn't, I mean. There's no yeah. way Penske lets Keselowski go. There, well, no there's... way. But, I mean, if Keselowski wants to go to Hendrick, there's nothing Penske can do to stop but him. But right now, why would you want Hendrick equipment over Penske? It's not even a comparison. You wouldn't right now, but who's to say that, you know, 2021, they changed the car. True, but I don't think they'd know enough at the time. They wouldn't have enough experience with the cars to really know, oh, yeah, it's worth leaving this team that's been really good for me. Right, but, you know, my conspiracy theory that I've been saying all year is that Hendrick sucks now because they're not worried about this car. They're focusing on the next one. That could be. But, I mean, how much can they focus on the next car? Because how much do the teams really know? Well, I mean, they've already got the car out. They've already they've already said which car they're going to have. Yes, but what I'm saying is they've only test drove this Gen 7 car one time with one driver, and we don't know the exact specs of it. And right, we don't we don't know that. But the owners have been the ones that are you know in the boardroom talking about what they want in the car. Okay, I mean so the maybe then probably do know. Yeah, maybe. So I mean, you know, if the, if the if the if the team owners are the ones that have decided on what they want in the car, I mean, you don't think that if they decide what they want in the car, Hendrick's probably the one that built the first one. That's true. You know what I mean? That is true. Although still, even if Hendrick knows a lot about the car and they're putting all their focus into it, 
I still don't think, I mean, at least for a, a couple more seasons once it launches, it would be worth it for Kozlowski to leave Penske. Because, I, I mean, Penske is not an idiot. I mean, you know no, he's definitely not. You know he's also working towards Gen Seven and and making sure that everything goes smoothly in terms of the transition to it. I mean, he's not going to let his team crash and burn just because there's a different car. I mean, Penske is one of those teams that it seems like no matter what era of car it's been, they've been successful. They were fast in Gen Four. They were fast with the car tomorrow. They were fast with you know the current generation. And I I don't think that's coincidence. You know? I don't think so either. I mean, Penske's a good team. Yeah. I'm just saying, even even though Penske is, you know, they've been better these last few years than they've been in a long time, but there's still, it, it's kind of like, if you think about, you you might not understand it because you, you're not really into baseball, but it's kind of like how the Yankees can get free agents that other people can't because they're the Yankees. True. So Hendrick, I mean, there's a lot of clout involved I mean, when yeah. it. Yeah, it's Hendrick. Yeah, that's that's a good point. But I just I don't I don't know. Like I could maybe and also, see. Also, if you think about it, it, in the past few years, who would you say has been Penske's flagship driver? Mm, Logano, I'd have to say. Exactly. So like for the longest time, it was Keselowski was the guy. Mm-hmm. And now it's it it feels like Logano's the guy, so maybe Keselowski's, you know, he wants to go somewhere else where he can be that the guy. You know, I mean, even on that team, he'd have Chase Elliott, where all the fans would like Elliott more. Yeah, but, but I in mean, in garage, terms of experience, it would and... be more like it's me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um. Yeah, I got, I, it's kind of a dumb question, but speaking of the next gen car, the Gen Seven, what is with that wrap they have on this test Gen Seven car? The that thing is ugly. It's hideous. I don't know why they did it. It's ugly, and I, like I'm wondering because the pattern is so like it, it messes with you. Like you look at it, and it's like it, like it moves. You know what I mean? Like it's like an optical yep. illusion. I'm wondering if they didn't do that to try and hide like the specific details of like the curvature. Of the body, you know what I mean? It's possible. I mean, I could see that. Do I think? I think it may have something to do. You know, because they got that um, the little the little laser that does technical inspections these mm. days. Like uh, maybe the pattern of that shows up better with those lasers hitting it. You know, so that they can more fine tune it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I I, I can't think of anything else that would. Yeah, either they're trying to hide something or make it more noticeable, one of the two. <laughs> but yeah. but they definitely didn't do it for aesthetics because, dear God, is that ugly. I mean, that is yeah. just... It was bad. Now, I mean, with, with that coming out, because, I mean, I mean, what we know about it, basically, it's going to be more spec, right? Yeah. That's... So it seems that we're going to, like, spec engine. It'll never be spec engine, but it... Right, well, I mean, close to that. It'll be like spec chassis, spec yeah. uh, bodies, and closer to spec engines. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, do you think that that's going to make it easier for the the Childresses and the Roushes of the world to compete at not just plate tracks, but everywhere else? I mean, on paper, you would think it would, right? But at the same time, I said the same thing about this package they're running this year. I thought, man, every track's going to be a plate track. You're going to see people winning races that you'd never expect to win races. But yet, you know, here we are with the same big three that we had last year with the old package. You know, the guys who were winning before are still winning. So, I mean, it, on paper, it sounds like it would help Roush and all them, you know, the, the mid-tier teams. But I can't say with confidence that it would. I think, really, when it boils down to it, the drivers that we have, when you have talent like Kyle Busch, Martin Truex, Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano, these are drivers that you put them in a go-kart and they're still going to win because they're just that good. And I, I, I think it would be more than just the package that would be needed for somebody like Roush to... I mean, it, it you can already kind of see it as the drivers. Look at how well Ryan Newman has been doing in that Roush equipment versus how he was doing in his old ride. And, and Roush... Before that, that six car was a joke. 
you never would have thought, oh, yeah, the six car might win this race. But when Ryan Newman was driving that car this year, there were a few times where I thought, yeah, he might snag this one. Right. Well, I mean, and that's another thing that I'm thinking about because they're saying that they want this spec car to be – it, they don't want it to prove how good the team is. They want it to prove how good the driver is. Yeah. And it makes sense if you think about it. I mean, because this current package does not make sense if you want the better driver to win. No, it doesn't. Not I at mean, all. If you're going around Kansas at full throttle, and you're base, it's Talladega, but a mile shorter. Yeah. That's all it is. And we already know that at Talladega, and anybody can win the race. I mean, Justin Haley won a fucking race. <laughs> That's true. Well, and, you know, Trevor Trevor Bain won the Daytona 500. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. The the real kicker is like you can still see skill with this with this package that they're running this year. Like you can still see it, right? Like mm-hmm. Kyle Busch, Martin Truex, Joey Logano, they'll pass a bunch of the back markers in no time at all. You know, they'll start 15th on a restart, and three laps later they're up to third. But as soon but, as but they any time they get around a car that has yep. any any semblance of speed exactly anytime they get near anybody who's mildly competitive the arrow is bad enough that they cannot pass them exactly i'm and honestly i mean i love nascar and i I don't really feel like i'll ever i'll never quit on it but damn it all the stuff that we hear about aerodynamics these days and in the past five ten years has just pissed me off to no end. Like, I, I miss the days where we could say, oh, this car is fast because it has more grip in the corner. And grip meant the setup, the suspension was better. Yes. I miss that. It wasn't aero grip. It was, right. you know, it wasn't mechanical. Because, it was mechanical It wasn't grip. because they had a they had a brace in the back windshield that was designed to break. And yeah. More downforce. It's, it, it's bullshit. Yeah, it really is. And... I mean, I know iRacing isn't ever going to be 100% realistic, but, like, you can really get a sense of what they're dealing with when you do play iRacing, because it's like, you're, you'll be making laps by yourself, and the car, you can't wreck that thing. It handles like a dream, full throttle oh all the way around the track. You get near, you get within two seconds of another car, and the handling is completely different. Absolutely. Like, it, it, it is night and day difference when you're anywhere near somebody versus clean like, air. I can I can look at my I racing statistics because I ran I ran the Cup season the whole second half of the Cup series I was running and I asked I was running the official series all week and there's a direct correlation from where I started in the race to where I finished if I start on the pole in the Cup series I'm gonna win the race yeah because nobody can pass you. The only tracks where people can pass you is where they're not running that package, which is short tracks. No, they're still running it at short tracks, and that's why Martinsville well, was so bad. Well, there's certain there, – earlier in the year, they were changing it, though. Ah, uh, were they? Yeah. Earlier in the year, they were still running the the uh, previous package. But then you go to Dover, and you can, you can run flat foot at Dover. It, it makes mm-hmm. – absolutely no sense yeah but i went there on i racing and once you figure that out and you get a setup that the tires don't fall off of really fast i mean you can dominate that yeah you start out front and you get clean air and that's it yep you're good it ain't a competition at that point and no. it yeah i i just don't understand why they they had to have seen this coming i mean they know how aero affects cars I mean, they had to have known that with this package it was going to be really hard to actually complete a pass. But they did it anyway. And they did it in the name of making a a visually more appealing race. Like, yeah, the racing itself, to a keen eye, you and I know that the racing is actually worse. And that, but, and that goes back to that BS that they were spitting us a few years ago about we're trying to appeal to the casual fans. Exactly. Because to you Fuck and the I... Casual Fans. Yeah, there are no casual fans. The, the casual fans left in 2005. They yeah. were they were gone. Okay, it was a fad. Everything is a fad. Right. The yeah. casual fan, you know what race they watch? They watch the Daytona 500, which is where we already have restricted plates yep. and aero sensitive cars. Yep. Leave it alone. Yeah. Right. But you know, to the casual fans, what what few there are, this package makes it look like better racing cuz oh, they're closer. 
and oh, they get side by side more often, and yada yada yada. But what they don't realize is you can't pass, so it looks right. better, but it's not. It's just like, just like what Tony Stewart said when they were talking about Indianapolis. He's like, uh, "Do you have anything to say about the lack of passing?" He's like, "We can go out on damn I-95 and pass all you want to. We're we're racing." Yeah. Racing, I mean, passing doesn't equal good racing. And good racing is is from the drivers have to actually drive the fucking car. Yeah. It it's it's hard to pass other cars, not because it's physically difficult, but because the other guy doesn't want you to pass him. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And like you see a lot of comments, like if you go back and watch old races on YouTube, you'll see people like like, it'll be a race where, like, one guy led a majority of the race and won it, and it wasn't much of a competition. And you'll see comments like, this is what the fans want back, apparently, for some reason. Like, people want really boring races where nobody's close and nobody's passing. Like, oh, I want a they're race. just, they're just, this. it's just rose-tinted goggles. If they knew that this was what the racing was like and they weren't just remembering the good races, they wouldn't want this package back. Well, yes, I do want the package back, because there's always going to be boring races in racing. Yep. And that's just a fact of life. It doesn't matter what package, doesn't matter what drivers, doesn't matter what cars. There's always going to be boring races. Yeah, you can't because put on a, you can't put on a show every week. Yeah, because let me tell you, if every race was exciting, then none of them would be exciting. And if every exactly. race was boring, I mean, it, it's sort of like the Robbie Gordon Stadium Super Trucks. They're an absolute blast to watch every now and again. But I mean, every race is complete and utter chaos. So I can't really think of... I, there's maybe one moment I can think of in all the races I've watched that stood out. Because it's all so chaotic. There's, there was not, I've never really seen anything super special right. happen. If, if, if nothing crazy... If, if everything was crazy all the time, then there would never be a trend for crazy stuff to break the trend and be interesting. Yeah, like you need the boring parts to make the interesting things even more special. Like, right, like if, if you think about early... Like, what was the best time in NASCAR? when we were growing it was the late 90s it was the early 2000s everybody was the racing was good okay mm -hmm. i mean and you had certain guys that were considered the best drivers and they would win mm -hmm. on all the tracks that they were supposed to win on and mm -hmm. then the crazy tracks the short tracks the road courses the super speedways somebody else might win and that's why those were compelling and interesting yeah, because you knew when you went to Atlanta and Charlotte and Chicago and places like that that you know, oh well, Jeff Gordon's going to be at the front and Dale Earnhardt's going to be up there and Dale Jarrett's going to be up there. But then when you went to these other tracks, it was like, fuck, anybody can do it. Now every week, it's like, well, it c it could be anybody. It's probably not going to be anybody because it's basically whoever gets the pole. But I mean, it could be. Right. Yeah, exactly. And it, <sighs> like, I don't mind having a boring race now again because. Here's the thing. Today, when you see a car dominating, you're not thinking, man, that guy is really skilled. That guy has this track down pat. He knows it like the back of his hand that he's running a better line than anybody else. What you're, you're thinking, damn, that guy's team did a good job. Not even that. You're, you're thinking, yep, that clean air sure is helping him get out front. You're not thinking about well, the team, yeah, nowadays. the car, the driver. It's just, well, he got the clean air. It, <laughs> Whereas, you know, when, when Jeff Burton led, like, every single lap of uh, New Hampshire, that was impressive. <laughs> that was really impressive. It was boring, but it was impressive. You go back and watch well, that see, race and you think, man. If you think about that race, it was like that, that race was impossible to pass people to because they had restrictor plates at New Hampshire. I can guarantee you it was easier to pass people in that race than it, than it is with this package. Oh, I mean, it, there was it, probably it, more passing in that race than there was in... ISM this year. Yeah, I mean, it probably wasn't easy to pass, but it was probably possible. Whereas now, right. I mean, with this package, That's you can ridiculous. barely call it possible. But I mean, I mean, I, I, I just wish that we would get away from a car that's so aero sensitive. I agree. I, like, I, I was watching can we a get clip. Get rid of the splitter. Okay, if we get rid of the splitter, that's like that's half of it. That's half the problem's gone. Right there. Get rid of the splitter. Chop that spoiler down. Boom. Problem solved. We're good to go. Mm -hmm. We got good racing again. The cars won't have as much grip, which makes them harder to drive. That means better drivers will perform better. Yeah. What's, and what's what's bad about that? 
And I will say, I think that's why Jimmy Johnson has fallen off so much. I mean, the dude is known for being able to wheel a loose car. You can't make yeah. these cars loose. I mean, if you think about like just a short list of dudes that if you get rid of aero sensitivity, these guys can wheel the fuck out of a race car and they'll win races. Jimmy Johnson, Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski. Like, these are the big names anyway. They're the they're the good drivers, and they're the good drivers for a reason. Yeah. Let them do their job. Exactly. You, I mean, you can't expect to have the fans happy, the, uh, at least the fans that are dedicated to the sport, and then have the drivers be happy when, you know, Kyle Busch, who's the best driver on the track and maybe the best car on the track, he, well, uh, I just can't. I just can't get past Ryan Blaney, man, because the air gets taken off my car. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> the, the like the worst part, one, a really good example of that, back in Bristol, Matt DiBenedetto leading the race, gets up on Ryan Newman, can't pass him. Mm-hmm. Can not pass him. At Bristol, of all places. Yeah. Can't pass him. And that lets Denny Hamlin get up to him. And, of course, Denny Hamlin being Denny Hamlin, I mean, he makes a pretty, a pretty aggressive move to get around both Newman and DiBenedetto, and he goes on to win the race. But, I mean, that right there, that race was decided by the arrow because if that yeah. was an older car, DiBenedetto would have been around Newman immediately. Yeah, as soon as he got to him. The first corner they get to, yeah. he just powers on by him. Yeah, and Hamlin, I mean, I know Newman is notorious for blocking and everything, but if a guy is that much faster, there just comes a point where you can't block him. But because yeah. the arrow slows the guy behind you down so much, it's way easier to block him and protect your position if you really need to. Yep. I mean... And, and, like, I knew that I was against this package from the, from the start. Oh, I was too. I knew I was, but I didn't realize how bad it was. Until I went to a race. Yeah. And I went to I went to the Martinsville race. In in the spring. <laughs> and and nobody could pass. And Brad Keselowski led four hundred and something laps and it was stupid. And then I went to Dover race. And you know, at, here's what NASCAR needs to think about if they're thinking about putting on a show, yada yada. The package that they put on the track at Dover was so bad I went to the track with a buddy of mine that had never been to a NASCAR race before and he fell asleep that's pretty bad that I mean, race was so bad I paid money I drove all that way and I watched Chase Elliott run seven laps and blow an engine I saw Joey Logano break an axle before the race even started and then they just rode around and the only time that they had a caution was for the stages. Yeah. Well, I'm it was r- the most boring thing I've ever seen. I'm right there with you. I go to Watkins Glen every year, and you know I've seen some of the most exciting races in the sports history. I mean, think about uh, Marcus Ambrose versus Brad Keselowski. I was there for that. Think about David Rudiman's wreck. That happened right in front of me. I mean, his car was full throttle in the fence, like 30 feet in front of my face. I've seen some real exciting races there, you know. Th- this last race there, <laughs> this year, oh my God. There was no passing. Whoever had the lead had the lead, even at a road course. Yep. You you could not pass because of the arrow. The most exciting thing was watching Kyle Busch drive his way back up through the pack, but, I mean, then Bubba had to go and act like a child because he got bumped and decided to murder Kyle Busch at the end of a fast straightaway, which is... Not exactly how I would do things if I was trying to retaliate, um, but, you know, Bubba is Bubba, and he's going to do immature things, because that's just kind of how he is, but, so yeah, Bubba put an end to watching Kyle Busch actually make the race entertaining, and then after he was out, it was like, well, I no longer care, because, I mean, I'm, I'm happy for Chase, I like Chase Elliott, I'm always glad yeah. to see him win, but it was not a very entertaining win, I'll tell you that much. Right, and then there's there's a reason why, alright, so I watched, a, I watched a YouTube video, and it was, uh... It was basically, it was like the top 20 moments of this year. And the, the interesting thing was that all of these moments that this guy listed as the most memorable of this whole season, half of them were not racing related. Yeah. 
it was this guy said something after the race or or this guy hit this guy under caution or this guy wrecked somebody on purpose that's that's not what racing is about you know if you got a top 20 list of the best things that happened this year and at least 16 of them aren't things that happen on the track during the race yeah then you put a terrible product on the track and now that I've kind of now that I've gotten into F1 I can kind of I can see where NASCAR has gone wrong even more because F1 is not trying to appeal to a casual fan the product that they're putting on the track is these cars are made to go as fast as physically possible mm -hmm. And they're all like that. Every car is just designed. There's no... Yep. I mean, there's there's some regulations. Yeah. But they all have to follow them, and they're left to their own devices, the teams are, to just make the car go as fast as it can. Yeah, and the and teams... They don't, that... No, they don't spend a lot of time side by side, and there's not an extreme amount of passing, even though they do pass. But yeah. it's, it's still... It's compelling. about racing. Yeah, it's it's about the racing. And, and when you do see teams like Red Bull or, you know... Some of the lower, not not low tier teams, but you know the mid tier teams. You see them actually grab a win now and again, and you know really compete. You're like, oh man, that team's improving, and it's it's interesting. You're, you're happy yeah. to see it. And I mean, I've seen things in F1, in in even the most boring F1 races this year, that were more entertaining than that Watkins Glen race that I went to. Literally, the most entertaining thing about that Watkins Glen race was the fact that um, the people camping across from us had some of the workers drop off a giant semi-trailer with a reefer next to their camper and it was staying on all night and it was really loud and really obnoxious this dude walks out of his camper and he starts screwing around with the keypad can't figure it out it's like he was trying to turn it off so i i meet up with snake the next day and we're walking around the infield and you know whatnot we i think we were in victory lane and my dad texts me and he says uh <laughs> guy turned it off workers are not happy it was full of ice the guy came out in the middle of the night turned it off because it was annoying him it was full of ice that's hilarious <laughs> it it was no longer full of ice when when they when he woke up but uh <laughs> yeah that that was the most entertaining thing that happened all week and yeah, that's sad yeah <laughs> that's legitimately sad but yeah. i mean i mean that's cool but <laughs> that's the, if that's the coolest thing to happen all race weekend you got a problem that's bad oh the other cool thing was people almost getting run over they uh if you don't know at Watkins Glen they uh <laughs> When when the cars come out for uh, practice, the Xfinity cars that we well, actually I think the Cup cars do no, just Xfinity. When the Xfinity cars come out for practice, they come out of the paddock, which is like towards the middle of the infield, and they got like an access road that goes down past some concession food stands, past the media center, past the garages, past Victory Lane, down to pit road. And that access road that they go down is anybody can access it. You don't need a special pass or anything. Um, it's just it's right next to the media center. And so people will be walking up and down that all day trying to get autographs or getting some food from the stands or whatever. But normally when the Xfinity cars come out and they, you know, they make their rounds going back and forth in and out of the paddock for practice, they'll put up gates, like little, you know, those little metal bars that kind of block off where you can't go. And, well, this time they forgot to put those up. I don't know if there was just like a miscommunication. Nobody put up any gates. And these Xfinity cars come flying out of the paddock at like 30, 40 mile an hour. And I mean, I've I saw several people get missed by what had to been inches, <laughs> you know. Um, I myself, I was sitting on the corner, and I mean, I wasn't gonna get hit because I was standing like behind a, a concrete barrier. But yeah. if that barrier was not there, I mean, literally those cars passed maybe a foot from me. It was pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, I mean, most of the entertaining stuff was not on track. We'll, we'll just put it that way. <laughs> But, uh, yeah. And then uh, there was Snake and I sneaking into Victory Lane, which was pretty hilarious, honestly. Did I, did I tell you about that, Cam? No. All right, so... I did not hear that story. So Snake and I, he, he shows up pretty early in the morning. It was like 8 a.m. And uh, we meet up, and he's like, well, if you want to head in, we can get some breakfast or whatever from the, the stands and get a coffee or whatever. You can show me around since you know where to go. I'm like, all right, cool. So me and Snake, we go into the infield. 
And uh, he's on his phone, and he's like, oh, there's going to be a tweet up in about an hour. He's like, oh, cool, where's it at? Is it going to be in Victory Lane like last year? He's like, yeah, it looks like it's going to be in Victory Lane. And uh, I was like, okay, well, let's go see if we can get in. So there's two entrances to Victory Lane. Um, the front entrance is that main access road that I mentioned with the Xfinity cars that goes straight past the, the media center. Um, you can you can walk past those guards back towards the garage area, and then you hang a right, and then there's Victory Lane. But there's those guards there that require a cold pass to get into the you know the pit area. Yeah. And alternatively, you can go around to the right of the media center, and you kind of circle around the motor coaches where the drivers all have their their campers and whatnot. And then behind that is pedestrian camping or civilian camping, where you can just anybody can rent those spots. It's right up against the pit terrace. And if you walk past those campers, there's another gate that leads directly to Victory Lane. So I told them, we'll try the first gate first, like the, the main access road. We'll try that first. And if they turn us around because we don't have cold passes, we'll just try the other one. So we go up to that guard. And my, my, the biggest mistake was that Snake had his pass around his neck. Normally, if you don't have a pass at all, they just assume it's in your bag and they don't bother stopping you because they don't really care. <laughs> but he had his pass around his neck in a lanyard. And so they could see it wasn't a cold pass. And the guy, turned. he didn't even say anything. He just motioned us to turn around. I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right, so we turn around. We go to the back entrance, and there's another guard there. And I'm like, hold up, Snake. Let me play the wheelchair card here. So I get up, <laughs> so I get up there, and the guard's just sitting there. He's like reading a, I don't know, he was reading something. I don't know if it was like a magazine or whatever. Sitting in a camping chair. I said, hey, do you need a cold pass to get into Victory Lane for the tweet up? He said, What's a tweet up? I said, well, it's like kind of. <laughs> I was like, well, it's kind of like a like a press conference. Like they're gonna have some drivers, spotters, you know, things like that. They're gonna be giving an interview here in Victory Lane. I was like, I I don't know if you need a cold pass to access just that. And he's like, what? Go ask him. And he points at Victory Lane, another guard in Victory Lane. Mm-hmm. And so I said, I looked at Snake and I kind of nudged him. I'm like, all right, let's go ask that other guard. We walk into Victory Lane. We never talk to the other guard. We just hide behind the grandstands <laughs> until the tweet up. <laughs> and the tweet up starts. And right away, Clint Boyer walks in. And I'm like, hey, can I get a picture with you, Mr. Boyer? And he's like, yeah, yeah, cool. So he goes up and Pockers interviews him or whatever. And we were there for the whole tweet up. And then from there, we went into the pit area without a cold pass out of the Victory Lane. We're just walking up and down pit road. Um... We could have gone on the track. There was no guard, like, at the end of pit road. Usually they got guards set up there, so you can't leave the end of pit road. But there was nobody there. We literally could have walked on the track if we wanted to, but we turned around. <laughs> and uh, we left, and that was that. But we snuck into victory lane, and it was pretty comical. Jeez. So y'all just, you just get anywhere you want to go with that damn wheelchair. I mean, basically, yeah. <laughs> I told them if it gets really, really bad, I'll just put on a helmet and... Uh, just kind of like roll in real fast, like nobody can stop me, you know. <laughs> Jesus. That's uh, that we're gonna get demonetized yeah, and gonna, reported. You're gonna need to. Uh, you're gonna need to go to a race with me. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, confidence is the key. Cause literally, if oh, like no, definitely, like definitely, if you act like you're supposed to be there, they don't care if you oh, act. Good. Yes, exactly, and especially. Just don't wear your lanyard where they can see it so that they can see you don't have what you need. That yeah. was what that was Snake's mistake. Because every other year, literally every other year, I just have my lanyard in my bag where they can't see it. I just go right past them. They don't say a word. Oh, dude. I didn't, I, I didn't tell you this, but look. Uh, so I went to the race at Dover, and I stayed out there because my buddy lives out there. And um, we, went to the, uh, we went to the casino the night before the race. And I did that on purpose because I was like, I'm going to catch somebody in here. You know, like, Clint Boyer is going to be in here or some shit. Mm-hmm. So I go in, and, you know, we're sitting at a blackjack table, and this guy comes and sits down, and he's got on a uh, he's got on a Chase Elliott hat. <laughs> he's kind of, a, kind of a big guy, you know. So I'm sitting there, play a couple hands, and I haven't really said anything to him. But I look at him, I was like, so uh, you Chase fan? He was like, yeah, you can say that. And I'm already like, what? The fuck? I was like, well, I'm a Chase fan, man. I, you know, came all the way up here from Danville, Virginia. You know, came up here to watch Chase, and I didn't have any of my stuff on. I was like, yeah, we're we're just uh doing a little gambling tonight, going to the race tomorrow. He was like, yeah. 
Uh, he's like, yeah, I'm not actually a fan. I actually, I, I work for Hendrick. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I'm a. He said, you know those guys that you see sometimes that like sit next to Gustafson on top of the pit box. I said, yeah. He was like, yeah, I'm I'm one of those people. <laughs> nice. I was like, so I was like, so what do you do? He said, I kind of like. There's this computer monitor in front of me, and it tells me stuff about the engine, and I just kind of tell Alan what's going on, and then he'll tell Chase what to do. I'm like, oh, okay. So I met the guy that looks at the monitor for the engine, and then the next day, Chase runs seven laps, and the engine blows up, and I'm like, I fucked that guy up. <laughs> you jinxed him. <laughs> this is my fault. I yeah. should never have spoken to this man. You absolutely jinxed him. Speaking of playing the wheelchair card, getting places where you shouldn't, I might have told you about this, and I, I don't remember. But, uh, so one year, I'm at Watkins Glen. This is years and years ago. I mean, this had to have been 2011. So, eight years ago, I would have been, like, 12, 13. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd have been 13, I think. I'm sitting there in a manual wheelchair. This is before I had the power chair. I'm outside the media center, and I'm just waiting for drivers, trying to get autographs, pictures, whatever. And they had been, it used to be the security was super strict at Watkins Glen. They've gotten a little bit more lax, used to be super strict. Well, I knew the security guard that, that worked at the media center that kept people out because I always sat there like every year and he was the same guy every year. So like we would talk every, every year and, you know, he would tell me about his family or whatever and we'd catch up. So he would always let me go behind where you're supposed to like where the drivers basically have to go so that I have a better chance of getting pictures with them. Because, right. you know, if you're out with everybody else, they might not stop because they're going to get mobbed, which is understandable. So I'm sitting there where I really shouldn't be, talking to the security guard, and I see this dude in a suit walking out of the media center. And, like, he's walking right at Like, I could tell he's walking right at me, and I'm like, oh, boy, I'm about to be told to move, <laughs> to leave. And I'm like, oh, well, you know. The guy said, so, uh... He said something about, you realize, like, this is a restricted area? I was like, yeah, I, I, I guess it is, you know? He said, well, I'm, how would you feel about being on the radio? And I was like, what? <laughs> you what, mate? <laughs> He's like, yeah, you know, we're, we're, right now we're doing a local radio show. It's being, you know, it's a, just a local show and, uh, around the area and they're recording it and we were going to bring some random people in and you're right here so why not I'm like okay why not that this is really strange so they bring me into the media center and they bring me into the, the booth there all the microphones and everything and my dad's with me and uh they start asking me about myself and everything and i'm answering their questions and uh they're like where are you from and i told them where where <laughs> where i was from mind you i'm for those of you listening at home i live several hours from watkins Glen. So I told the guy where I'm from, and he's like, oh, that's where that one restaurant is. And he lists a restaurant that is like a couple minutes from my house. It's a local restaurant. That one restaurant. <laughs> and, and I'm like, yeah, that, that's how you – yeah. And he's like, yeah, no, I'm not a stalker. I just – I really like food, and I know that restaurant, and like I know like what the place you're talking about. And so I spent the next like 20 minutes talking on the radio, being very confused – and then the show ended. They sent me on my way, and that was that. But uh, that's crazy. Yeah, uh, I mean, playing the wheelchair card, dude. <laughs> you never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> that was yeah. <laughs> I think I did. I told you about when I met Danica Patrick, right? No. Oh, dude, this was horrible. I felt so bad. So. Oh God. <laughs> so there is a. Did you insult her womanhood. I did not. I did not. So what happened was. I'm outside the media center again. This was, I think, the year after the radio thing. And there's a huge crowd. Absolutely massive crowd outside this media center. And I'm standing next to this guy, and this dude's decked out in Danica gear. The shirt, the hat. He's got, a he he's got several hero cards. Danica. Danica comes out of the media center. And mind you, this guy gave me a Danica hero card. And... uh in case she came out to sign or whatever. He's like, yeah, you know, if she comes out, have her sign this. <laughs> she comes out. She gets a picture with me. She, I was the only person she stopped for. Got in her cart, rode away. That poor guy didn't even get an autograph. Oh, my God. I'm like, oh oof. I, I felt <laughs> so bad. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, I <laughs> it was bad. It was so bad. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Eagle, you've been in this chat, but you have not been chatting. What the oh, frick are you doing I over there? I'm in the middle of trying to avoid Rhino. Rhino? I hear a yeah. bunch of yelling going on. Oh, That's Rhino. I forgot you switched to Spider-Man. I thought you were still playing bowling. And oh, so no. when you said you're avoiding a Rhino, I'm like, what? I don't remember that being <laughs> part of bowling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, is that some more terminology? Like, a, a, you get a turkey and you get so many turkeys and it's a rhino? I don't know. I don't know. He's right next to me. And I'm, like, freaking out right now. You're, so that's why I've been... So you're in the stealth section where you play as uh, the the kid. Kid. Yeah. yeah. So I'm pretty far along. Yeah, you're getting oh, there. I, I just realized that um, from getting my maximum of race participation points on our race and I just bought the super late model for free. You should have bought the Porsche. Tried out the AI. Well from the money I just saved on the super late model I can get the Porsche. Do it dude. That AI is great. It is so good. I mean it it knows where you're at. It drives realistically. The difficulty settings are like realistic like you could see a human driving at the speeds that the AI drive at various skill levels I can't wait for the cup AI I can't either I, and what I'm really ready for is like I've seen a bunch of people and I'm already kinda I'm in a discord for one of them um, they're doing AI series for the cup series and I wanna be in on that it's kinda like your um the thing you're doing on uh, NR 2003 yeah so they just kind of, uh, they just put the statistics onto the AI cars and you can change them week to week if that's the car that you're responsible for. And then you just kind of watch it with everybody. I think that's going to be really, really fun to be involved with. Yeah, I agree. That, that could be really fun. I need to get the points updated for my NR 2003 season. I've just been really lazy. Um... But that, that's going to continue. I just got to get them points updated. I've been so focused on other things. It's, But I, it is, that kind of thing is a lot of fun, like especially when you've never really done it before. I know Eagle has some experience running like the AI fantasy leagues and stuff he mentioned. Right. So, yeah, I'm just hoping when they do add the cup AI that it, because I know that the AI is like based on the track more so than the series. I'm just really, really hoping that they allow you to do things like take the cup cars to Concord or to Iowa or, you know, wherever else that they might not go in real life. That they actually program that. But even if they don't, even if it's just like the official NASCAR tracks, that's going to be a ton of fun if the AI is as good as the road AI. Damn it, I died. Oh, I'm, I'm just kind of, <laughs> I'm bouncing around on... You know all the all of you guys' profiles on iRacing. Mm -hmm. Me and uh, me and Drake have run the exact same amount of races on Oval. And he started after you. Yeah. That's wild. Which he which he's streaming and stuff now. So. Yeah, he's straight booing, dude. That makes sense, but it makes me feel good now that we've got the the same amount of races. Our stats compared to each other. It's making me feel real nice. Yeah. My stats are terrible because I have done like four races. <laughs> 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 I, I just really enjoy doing like fun races with like you and B Hicks and Snake and stuff. Like I enjoy that. That's a ton of fun. Yeah. But I'm not about that super competitive crap. Which is why I'm really looking forward to the AI because then it doesn't matter if I accidentally dump somebody. Right. Like, I can dump the AI and not be called an insufferable retard over the voice chat. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you've won, you have won 60, you've run 65 races on Oval, official. And I've won one official race. you won one. <laughs> hey, but I do have two wins on Oval. One was a pickup cup. Yeah. So, you know, that, that was that. Well, I mean, if you, if you really, if you dig into it a little bit, okay, you're, you're not bad. You're really not, because you're... I mean, top I am. Five, 
Your top five percentage is 35%. I mean, you've got 65 races with 23 top fives. That's pretty good. Yeah, but I'm also racing with, like, complete idiots because of my low I rating. So, there's that. I mean, yeah, but... <laughs> you got this. Alright, but look, look. We need to figure out what to do. If you can get hand controls on this wheel that I've got, I will send it to you today. I mean, I'm going to have to look into it. I, I think I could probably use the base and, like, use the force feedback of the base and just mount, like, the wheel itself, like, my wheel itself, because um, it does have the paddles. Or right. alternatively, what kind of paddles does that wheel have on it? Just just click paddles? Yeah, click shifter paddles. Yeah. That's... Yeah, okay. Hey, I beat the level. Nice. Um, oh yeah. But how much like how much movement do they have in those paddles? Is it literally just um, like a quick click, or is it? I mean, there's a little bit of range there, but you can hear it when you hit it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Again, the other thing I was thinking of is like doing a wheel with force feedback, but then doing like legitimate hand controls, like what you'd have in a real car, like with right. the with the uh, lever basically next to the wheel that goes down to the pedals. And you just kind of thing is, I need a way better desk to mount that. There's no way my current desk could handle that infrastructure. Yeah. But I mean, th not having force feedback isn't that big of a deal once you get used to it. It's just one of those things. It's just it it helps a little bit here or there for certain things, like being able to save your tires a little bit more and like feel the car out. But the actual right. driving and handling, I mean, it's not uh, not anything big. But hey. I think we've been recording for about an hour, and I think we're going to have to call it there because um, I got a few things I want to do here before too long, so that was that, but that, you know, I, th I think uh, that was pretty good, about an hour recording. Um, kind of more, I, I think the viewers at home should kind of recognize, if you saw the first episode, it's kind of more laid back, just kind of... You know, talking less, uh, less of having a specific subject, which I think makes for more entertaining content. I don't know. I think Cam agrees, but yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of less of a less of an agenda. Things yeah. don't feel rushed. Yeah. I mean, even that first episode we had was like almost two hours long, but it felt rushed. Yeah. We spent so much time on uh, on the, the first top ten list we did. Yeah, and we had we had so much to cover. It was just yeah. But anyway, uh, this has been episode two, and we'll catch you in the third one. Anybody have any final statements? Nope. This is your chance, Eagle. You can say your catchphrase. Just remember to drive fast and eat ass. Yeah, buddy. There it is. All right, we'll catch you all later. <laughs>